All right, I'm Garrett Town with AM Solar, and this video is going to talk about the solar IV curve, which will lead into a conversation about PWM versus MPPT charge controllers. And I think this is kind of the foundation for understanding how solar panels and charge controllers work. Uh, to get things started, we'll start with a basic electric circuit, which is a voltage source and wires that go to a resistance. So the voltage source creates pressure to drive electrons through the wires at a certain flow rate, which is the current, and the resistance takes off that voltage and dissipates power or consumes power. So the way these V, I, R, and P relate to each other is with these equations, voltage equals I times R. And I stands for current for some crazy reasons, so just go with me on that. And P, power, equals I times V, power equals current times voltage. Uh, to put this in terms that you can relate to, let's deal with a uh, standard 60 watt light bulb. So we take 60, plug it into the P, and we take 120, which is your standard voltage you get from electrical outlet, put that into V, and that gives us an I of 0.5 amps. Now we take all those and put them into the equation above, so we know that I is 0.5 amps, V is 120 volts, do the math, and that gives you a resistance of 240 ohms for the resistor. So a 60 watt light bulb is, the filament is a 240 ohm resistance that, gener that produces or uh, expels uh, 60 watts of power. Now to relate this to solar, instead of a voltage source, we have a solar panel instead of a, a load like a, a resistor we have a charge controller or a battery bank and we have lines flowing to the battery bank from the solar panel <clears throat> so one of the main differences with a solar panel circuit instead of a basic voltage source electric circuit is that uh, voltage and current vary depending on the resistance of the load uh, which is the charge controller or the battery the irradiance, which also means the light, or T, the temperature. Um, so one way you can see how these all relate to each other is you take a solar panel circuit and <clears throat> you test the uh, current that comes off of it by varying the voltage from a short circuit where the resistance is zero all the way out to an open circuit where the resistance is infinity. And when you graph that, you get a shape real similar to this where it starts out somewhat flat and then it takes a curve and heads downward. At the very point of this curve where the slope equals negative one or the derivative of the function for the voltage to current equals negative one, we call that the MPP, which stands for maximum power point. So on a 180 watt solar panel, the VMPP is 19.25 volts. So follow this up to there, 19.25 volts. The IMPP, the current where it's most effective, is 9.35 amps. And if you set the circuit so that it's an infinite resistance, in other words, open circuit, the VOC, voltage open circuit, is 23.4 volts. And if you short circuit it, the current is 9.92 amps. And when you find the area of a rectangle, you do base times height. And that would result in voltage times current. This equation up here, which gives power, and that's 180 watts. 
So the area of this box enclosed by the VM by the MPP is 180 watts. And that is under standard test conditions which are 25 degrees Celsius and with a light intensity of 1000 watts per meter squared. <coughs> If you increase the brightness that the solar panel is exposed to, that curve shifts upward. Or if you go under some partial shade, the curve shifts downward. If you get colder, the curve shifts to the right, meaning you get more voltage. If you get hotter, the curve shifts to the left, meaning less voltage. So that means on a bright, cold day, you're gonna get the most power. A lot of people think it's a bright, hot day. It's actually a bright, cold day the atoms or the molecules are closer together so uh, electrons can transfer between them more efficiently. So the next thing is the difference between an MPPT and a PWM charge controller. An MPPT charge controller is able to adjust the resistance that the solar panel sees and function right at this MPP point. So you've got the, it's operating at the VMPP and the IMPP. And this point is constantly changing depending on the temperature and the brightness. So a good MPPT charge controller will operate at one voltage for a little while and then after a certain time period has gone up it will increase the resistance so that the uh, voltage goes up and we'll see was that better than the last place we were at? Nope. Okay, we'll go back. Then the next period it'll decrease the resistance. Was that better than the last period? Yes. Okay, we'll stay there. And it does that over and over just to keep finding that optimal point to operate. But a PWM charge controller on the other hand, it only operates at the charging voltage of the battery. So like 13.5 volts which brings it up to here, which changes the I, with IMPP, uh, so it operates at a different I, and you draw a different shaped rectangle. So if you look at these two rectangles, the one outlined in the orange for PWM and the one outlined in the red for MPPT, they have a different area, and that area corresponds to the amount of power that they can transfer to the battery bank. The MPPT rectangle is about 20% bigger than the PWM rectangle, meaning that you're gonna get about 20% more power with an MPPT charge controller.